just it's a privilege. Thank you very much. Thanks again also to the Rules Committee and to the other members who have helped put forward, I think, very meaningful amendments to refine this legislation. Look, we all recognize that America stands at a crossroads right now. Do we protect national security or do we allow our adversaries to take point on the world stage? Not even a week ago, 300 weapon systems were launched with the intent to obliterate our closest ally in the Middle East, Israel. And it wasn't just the Israeli civilians who were in harm's way. It was American colleagues like mine who have flown combat sorties in the region. It was our British, French, and also our Arabic allies, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, who stood up and intercepted it to a 99% efficiency kill rate. Their biggest concern was that the success of last Saturday in the safeguarding of Israel may not ever be able to be replicated because we do not have the weapon systems necessary to be able to do this again. And so what I see as so important in this bill is that we not only resupply, but we reaffirm our commitment to our allies. As was highlighted earlier in this committee, the defense of our southern border must always be national security issue number one for the United States. But as we march out also, we must be clear that the terrorist attacks on Israel on the 7th of October drive us forward with six amendments that I'd like to briefly highlight. America must be unwavering in our support to our strongest ally, and that means not only supporting them with technology and weapon systems, but it also means holding the greatest threat actor in the region accountable. Iran action was naked. It is the first time that they've not used just their proxies, but launched a full-scale assault. The sanctions regime against Iran today is largely unmitigated. $80 billion in illicit oil sales going back to fund both the proxies and the exact weapon systems that we saw attack Israel. The drones, the cruise missiles, all a result of a sanction regime that's not been enforced. My amendment would directly require Treasury to hunt down and identify high-value Iranian assets that are helping to fund this and Iran's campaign of terror across the world, including those potentially threatening the United States today. We can either be, as has been highlighted, a Chamberlain or a Churchill when it comes to addressing the threat from Iran. Not acting today would not only be a dereliction of duty, but would continue to put U.S. forces in harm's way, including those three members that we saw who lost their lives just earlier this year. Second, the threat in Europe and around the world is a direct threat, not just from the kinetic strike caused by Russia, but of those who would fill the void, including those coming from China. As was highlighted earlier here, we have to be able to ensure that any dollars going, even through loans, need to ensure that we do not have a Chinese asset that would be able to capitalize on that. That's why my follow amendments here would ensure that no other adversary is able to set up shop in either Ukraine, Taiwan, or Israel. Many American businesses have already invested heavily in Ukraine and stand ready to repair that critical infrastructure. What we cannot allow our Chinese entities like Huawei or ZTE to be the beneficiaries of assets that were seized from Russia from their attack and then repurposed for the reconstruction of that being done by Chinese manufacturers. And this would help prioritize U.S. infrastructure as a key element for rebuilding that country and defending it. Congress has banned Huawei operations in the U.S. in, or in 2019, and we must ensure that no U.S. taxpayer dollar goes forward to pay for a Chinese company having a market advantage in this area. Allowing USAID to fund a Huawei telecommunications infrastructure only emboldens the CCP and would allow China to strategically position itself on NATO's front door. So with that, I want to thank my colleagues for bringing recommendations forward, standing with our allies, protecting our country, both at our southern border and across the world. Mr. Burgess, thank you very much for your time. I yield the remaining.